this was one of the first links in my DM this morning about stories to cover. So coming recommended from a follower. And I'm going to give you a little story here because I feel like if we dig a little deeper into why people hate her so much, you can step back from the a little bit of the political side of things and go, okay, this starts to make sense because it's really systemic and it spans far beyond her. She is just a lightning rod. But to get to the root of that, if you follow anything on my Instagram or as I build this YouTube channel up, you'll hear the reoccurring theme of, you know, where I came from. You know, we were a working class family at best. My parents didn't graduate high school, you know, got to like the eighth grade. You know, my mom ran off. My father worked in a steel factory for like no money an hour. So when I look at AOC, I... I kind of go back to my childhood of that struggle and I'm like, well, she, she's the person that was supposed to protect us. Right now. I know we're not in her district, so that's not what I'm getting at. It's just a thought of what she's says she's fighting for and what she's advocating for was the people in my neighborhood. It was the working class and below, um, around us, the middle class were rich, like balling out of control, <laughs> you know, th- this is for the people that, you know, were lost in life or just work, you know, basic jobs. And AOC is, has that mantra of I'm fighting for those people. And that's where I think everything just goes wrong. And as I was talking to someone this morning about this, I'm, you know, trying to get my thoughts out because I keep going back to elitism and you see so much of that with our politicians. And part of it's just hip being a hypocrite. And that's, between elitism and being a hypocrite, I think that makes up almost all politicians in this country. It's, it's, it's maddening at this point. So when you see someone that is wearing a tax of rich anything to an event that's probably, I think they said like $30,000 a, a ticket or something, like you're right in the middle of the global elite. And you're talking about nonstop on how you're advocating for like the working class and below. And it's like, it doesn't really make sense. And this is where she's very smart from a PR perspective. Everyone's talking about it. It's in my inbox this morning. I'm talking about it. And I don't even find this particularly interesting at the end of the day. But, you know, whatever. It's trending. My fans want me to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. So great at PR. And I know this helps her and her party raise money. It's a smart play until you realize if you are falling for all of this and you're getting pimped and I never like getting pimped by politicians. I, I'm someone that ends up in the center. I don't fly anyone's flag. There's this things I look at and I go, this stuff needs to get fixed and it needs to get done. I don't, as I say, I don't treat politics like sports teams. I don't, <clears throat> I don't have a team. I just know there's things that got to get fixed. <clears throat> so when I, see this and the whole tax the rich mantra it, it just makes me laugh because I, I, I think of hypocrite and then i think of the how elite our politicians have become to the point of if you haven't been paying attention the same people that are pushing um the vax down your throats you know congress is exempt from having to get it and it's kind of making a lot of people mad. Like there's a lot of people that are really trying to do the right thing and they're getting the vax and and they're trying to make you feel guilty. They're beating you over the head that you're you're subhuman garbage if you don't get the vax. And then they go and exempt themselves from it. And let's keep in mind that you know Congress is made up of Republicans and Democrats and independents, right? Everyone's exempt. It wasn't one side or the other. And you realize we keep falling into this trap of uh, these people kind of get to do whatever they want while telling you what to do. If, if you don't want to follow your own rules, why do you want everybody else to? You know, when it came to the whole Vax thing, every member of Congress should have got on camera, stuck their arm out, and got it live. That is like lead by example, right? That's how you get people to follow. How do you get people to follow when you exempt yourself from the own rules you're pushing on everybody else? So is it really, I'm fighting for the working class by uh, going to the Met Gala, which is, you know, top of the top, elite, celebrity, expensive, wealth, 
reeks of wealth, right? And you start looking at not just her, but politicians as a whole, that it, they are this like kind of ruling class elite that are, you know, they, they stay in power by telling you all these things they're going to do for you. My thought is, I'm curious if, if you're listening to this and you're in her district, has your life changed since she got in? Like, I got that issue in, in Michigan where, hell, you look at any governor, Democrat or Republican, like, things have not been that great in the state. And I look at, you know, has my life gotten better since they got into office? And, you know, when you say no, you got to step back and like, well, whose life got better? So if you notice, AOC's life has gotten significantly better since she got into office, but has her constituents. That is kind of the th thing I hold all politicians to. I don't care what side you're on. Has your life gotten better? Have things in your neighborhood gotten better? Are things better since you've elected this official? And what you realize is it's hard to say that for almost anybody in politics anymore. But, you know, goddamn, are they out there trying to shove these rules and regulations and laws that they create down your throat that they don't even want to follow themselves? So my thought is, you know, I hate looking at someone that grew up with no money. It's, I didn't like people like this. It's, uh, I'm fighting on your behalf, but I'm at the Met Gala. Man, we just don't get along. I, I'm not, man, I'll tell you. Do, we, do you not see what's going on right now? And let's remove AOC from it. Hold that to all politicians on both sides. Look at the stuff that happened. Um, let's lock everybody down. But then, because we're in the government, we're going to go do the things that we just told you you couldn't do. And this happened in many states. Um, from California to the dude going out to dinner to, I think it happened in Michigan where the governor had her husband trying to get a boat launched or something during, while wow, other people couldn't boat if I recall, I'm, maybe I'm mixing that up. And then hell, even in Texas, didn't wasn't there like a crazy storm down there and then uh, what's his name, jetted off somewhere in the middle of a, of a crisis? This is Republicans and Democrats. Do we not all look around and say they just get to live by different rules while they're out there acting like they're fighting for us? Like, I'm not down with that bullshit, man. And I think that's where you, you look at it. It's like, it's not this, it's not AOC's policies people hate so much. It's that you see someone that is, like every politician, they're telling you what you want to hear so they can stay in power, go to the Met Gala. Hey, if you're going to the Met Gala, what do you have in common with, you know, if I go back to when my father was, when I was growing up, he's working in a steel factory. What do you have in common with that person? Are you, are you furthering the cause by trying to be like a celebrity online and getting the likes and getting the news and the buzz and the PR and going to these type of events? It's, uh, it all seems self-serving. So again, like her life got significantly better, but has yours. And I hold every politician to that measure, and it doesn't matter what side you're on. I know it's tough to say that, because we're so divided right now as a country, but where is it getting us? Is your life getting better with the people who are elected in office right now? So, again, I don't like elite people, and I feel like as time goes on between the technology companies, the billionaires, the politicians, if you look at how many people in Congress are millionaires, and it makes you wonder how, not just millionaires, over any period of time in this world, if you got a decent job, not surprising that you got a million dollars by the time you're 50. But if you look at the amount of wealth that people in Congress have, does it ever make you wonder how? Does it ever make you wonder why? Where did it come from? And you, these people start amassing like fortunes. Where did it come from? You know, you make 170 grand a year. How, how are you worth 50 billion? Like it's. Do we just not want to admit to ourselves that that's what's going on? That there's corruption? That there's back-ended deals? But we let these people get in power. And they are this kind of like elite ruling class. And it makes it seem like we have some kind of control because we vote. Um, I just don't think this is the person that represented my, you know, the people like my father in the steel factory. Um, I feel like the people that represented him wouldn't be going to the Met Gala. And, uh... It's funny, you know, the, the whole tax of rich thing, it's like she's getting rich or she's making money by talking about taxing the rich. Like, 
You can't even make this stuff up anymore. What I'm saying is the story is bigger than her. I think if you look at all politicians, it's the same story over and over and over again. Um, and something I always say, it's the people in power always tell you how they want to fix your problem or how things are a problem, but they never fix your problem, right? They, they always have to sell you. Um, they want to sell you the up. <clears throat> but if they actually fix it, if they fix your problem, then you don't have a reason to vote, them, vote for them anymore. So they have to keep you down. They keep you down so they can sell you the up. And keep in mind, if they ever, if they ever get you up, then you, they, you don't have a reason to vote for them anymore. Why is it 2021 and we don't see that? And that goes across all parties. And it doesn't matter who you are. These people in power, in their mind, it's their job to stay in power. No one stays in power by solving everybody's problems, right? So, again, I just think the hate's bigger than just AOC. It's a, it's a systemic issue if you look across all people in, in government of power. Um, they're telling you one thing while they go and do another. They're all living a life that you can't even dream. Most people... I'm, probably everyone listening to this episode will never even have a shot at going to the Met Gala. I don't want my politicians going to the Met Gala. It just seems like it's so... Like You think that's like for the celebrities and, and the crazy rich elite. What are these politicians doing there when you think about it? Um, great for PR. They're going to raise a bunch of money. They're going to stay in power. But, you know, they get into power and their life changes significantly. My question is, has yours? I guess we'll see, but um, I don't like doing a whole lot of political stuff, but if, if you drop me a DM with a link of something that is uh, somewhat interesting or trending, I'm going to try to talk about it. You can send me a DM on Instagram at jamesphillip313. doesn't have to be politics. I'd actually prefer it doesn't. Um, life, relationships, business, money, I'm down to talk about whatever. Um, occasionally politics. This one seems to be like a hot button, so I decided to jump on it. Uh, until then, I'm going to catch you on the next one.